Okay, so we're out in the yards. We're stripping off the honey boxes. Uh, we're sending everything back down to the brood chambers. And I'll just kind of show you what we're doing here. Um, we ran out of flow back uh, the last week of July. These hives gathered honey uh, June, July, and then we have had nothing through August. So we've had to start feeding these colonies in August. Uh, the fear with that is we have to make sure these colonies have feed, uh, but we have to be very careful that, especially when we're feeding early, like uh, beginning of August, which is way too early, we want to start feeding for winter in September. So we have to be very careful not to uh, bulk or bung up these uh, brood chambers so they can't produce a brood nest. So what we did, we want to keep that brood nest going, but we got to be careful not to feed them too much syrup to bung up that nest. And that's an almost an impossible balance to make just solely by feeding into brood chambers like this. So what we did is that first honey super that we had on top that we give back after we pulled the first pull of honey, we set out syrup and we filled that second box full of syrup. So those brood nests were sitting underneath a box of syrup. As you can see, this box is pretty much full. This is one of the fuller boxes. Uh, so they, they were sitting underneath probably about 15 pounds of syrup for the last two or three weeks. This allowed us to keep the colony going, uh, to, to build that good winter nest there. Right now they've got like, uh, uh, they're looking after one, two, three, four frames. Some of these are five frames of brood in these colonies. Nicely rimmed to syrup, just a beautiful looking nest with extra syrup on top in this honey box. Okay. So we induced a little bit of feeding. We induced uh, stimulation to uh, keep that brood nest going by feeding them syrup into this honey box. Now, we are blowing the bees out of these boxes of syrup and then we're setting them aside to get robbed out because this will not hit the honey host. This syrup is to be used for the colony but it will not come back to the honey house. These boxes do not come back until they're empty. So we're setting them out, we're blowing out the bees, and we're setting them out to the side, and they will get robbed out. So the colonies will bring that syrup back into the bottom, into the brood nest. This time of year, we're just starting to uh, bulk the bees up for winter. As they have that winter nest prepared, they will rim that colony with, uh, with syrup and honey, and then as that winter nest hatches out through September and October, we'll backfill that all up with syrup. So what we're doing is we're feeding them syrup in August. We're stimulating that brood nest with that syrup. Uh, we're ensuring they don't starve. And then what we're doing is we're taking that same syrup and we're putting them through the same stimulative uh, effect uh, to continue on building this uh, winter nest. So we're using this syrup twice. Once to maintain them and now once to uh, keep the so-called flow going and to build this winter nest. We've got some supplement going on here. You'll notice they're actively on the protein. So they're aggressively feeding that brood nest below. There's a little bit of pollen coming in right now, which is essential, but we are in a dearth situation right now. We have absolutely no flow going on. So this is just what we've been doing. Uh, this is one way we've managed this uh, this brood nest through a zero flow situation all through August here and uh, and these colonies look absolutely fantastic because of it. So I'm a big believer in feeding supplement uh, especially in the spring I see a direct um, response to the health and the vigor of my hives when I feed supplement to my bees in the spring I also feed supplement to my hives in the fall and uh, the jury's still out on this one for me. I'm not sure if I'm just, uh, if this is just a feel good exercise for me in the, in the fall. Um, I'm putting it on and I'm seeing these bees actively gorge on it like this, like they're readily uh, consuming this patty. Um, whether I'm providing any benefit to our nest or not, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly seeing the same type of 
uh, direct response feeding my bees supplement in the fall as I do in the spring. Like I don't see that translation for, of that patty down into the brood nest. Uh, my intention is maybe to fill in the gaps of the pollen coming in in the fall to develop this winter nest. Maybe provide the basics of proteins and the essential fats that they need uh, to help provide a better, uh, a better diet to raise healthier bees and maybe they'll live longer. I'm not seeing this patty stimulating that queen to lay more eggs. And that frustrates me just a little bit because that's my intention here is to help build a bigger nest. But um, there's so many factors at play here and I just don't see all the factors that are, in, that are influencing the queen. I, can, I can't get down to this nest all the time. Uh, there's so many factors outside of the hive that are going on. Uh, the weather, the climate, uh, the, the incoming pollen coming in, the, the quality of the queen, just other cues that these bees use to set themselves up uh, to, develop, to develop their nest into winter. I've certainly seen a huge slowdown in queen laying. Like the, these massive nests, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, nine frames of brood in here. Now I'm looking at two, three, you know, four, not a whole, not a really big nest. Uh, it's kind of frustrating for me as a beekeeper to, to see uh, the change in seasons like this, but I realize that this is completely natural and this is just how the bees set themselves up. I want them to raise that monster nest, but it's not up to me. It's up to all the conditions around the queen and the queen herself to develop this nest. So I've asked beekeepers, you know, especially in California, these guys know how to build bees. And I, and I say, am I fooling myself feeding supplement to my bees in the fall? Is it just a feel good exercise? And they overwhelmingly, the response is, Ian, that's the stupidest question I've ever heard you say. But I don't think what's going on in other areas like in California can directly translate to what's happening in Manitoba here. Am I seeing the same type of conditions influencing the queen as they are down in California? Probably not. So what we need to do as beekeepers here in Manitoba is to really look hard and you know put a little bit of study and trial into feeding supplements in Manitoba to get Manitoba results uh, that are influenced with Manitoba con conditions. This is one of the projects that I'd like to see move forward. And yeah, but, but look at these bees. Just devouring this patty. Now I see that and I say, yeah, that's good for the hive. But is it? So these are the questions we got to ask ourselves and these are the questions we got to continue to find out.